Hi, it's Jan Beta. And this, some of you might recognize as a Commodore 64. Albeit, it's, it looks like it is a pretty special one. Yeah, well, um, it seems to be a Commodore 64 C case with a bread bin a brown keyboard in it. Or is it some special version of the Commodore 64 after all? Let's have a look. So here's the machine, looks uh, nice and tidy, kind of. The um, keys are a bit yellowed, but that's uh, it's an old computer. But look at that. There is this warranty seal on here, which uh, seems to be intact, apart from the sticker peeling off here a bit. But yeah, it's a, it's a sealed Commodore 64C with a brown keyboard. What's happening? So some of you who um, follow Neil, aka the Retro Man Cave on YouTube, if you are not following him, I strongly recommend you go um, click on the link I will put there and check his channel out. He's doing quite the same um, project type like me, but um, he does way more sophisticated video work, I think. Um, yeah. He's a, he's a good uh, a nice person and I actually had some, I, I guessed it in some of his um, recent Commodore 64 videos and he had a Commodore 64 that was quite like this with an intact seal. The secret about these is this version of the Commodore 64 C case was um, the most cost reduced version that Commodore ever made and it has no screws in the case, it just has these uh, little clips that you can easily, using some spatula tool, can unclip using a spatula tool. Um, so the seal is not, not an indicator of whether this has been opened or not. This probably has because it has the uh, brown keyboard, which uh, didn't come with it, oh, I can assure you. They uh, didn't go back to the brown keyboards. Or as far as I know, at least, um, co with Commodore everything's possible, of course, but um, as far as I know, they never uh, sold Commodore 64s that looked like this. <laughs> this particular machine was donated to me by uh, Scusi, who donated a whole uh, two huge boxes of stuff. Um, so um, thank you so much, mister. Um, that was very, very generous and uh, yeah. You, you are going to see some of the stuff he sent me um, pop up in uh, upcoming videos. So this time it's this one, which is, of course, um, as it so happens with my channel, which is broken. <laughs> and it is broken. It is a black screen, basically. It outputs a black screen. So let's have a look inside and uh, see if we can see anything right away. So as you can see, I'm just going to clip these two and the middle one I'm just going to clip like this. So the, the seal remains intact and um, you can still open the Commodore 64, just like this. Another interesting feature of these cases is that the keyboard just clips into the top half of the case. You don't need any um, standoffs like um, with the other Commodore 64C cases. Um, there are just clips and you just, it's, it's not holding in very nicely, but it works. And uh, yeah, I, I guess it's a nice way of doing this, um, reducing the amount of screws and metal stuff you have to put in there. So it's, it's a way of cost reduction, of, of course. So let's, I'm just going to remove the top half here altogether and have a look at our circuit board here, um, which at first glance seems pretty normal. But if you look closer, you might see some oddities. One being around here and the other one being around here. So let's take a closer look. Okay, here's the oddities in close up. First of all, we have a 6510 um, CPU, 
which is, of course, the old version of the um, CPU, the Commodore 64 C's with the short boards, which this is, usually came with the um, 8500 processor, which is the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's the, it's the NMOS version of the um, chip, which is another um, fabrication process, um, basically that uh, the chips are producing less heat and are um, a bit more reliable, I think. It may have broken on this one and, and uh, replaced with this one, which is absolutely fine because they are completely um, interchangeable. You can, an 8500 is completely um, compatible to 6510. So you can use an 8500 in old Bradbin or you can use 6510 in a new uh, on the new board. They are completely 100% compatible. So no worries there. The other thing that I recognize here is this one, which is an MOS 6569 revision 3, which this is the VIC-2, the um, graphics chip in the Commodore 64. And this one is also the old version um, corresponding to the processor there. It's even older, it's from 1984 according to the date code, whereas this is from 1985. That doesn't matter, it's the old version. And um, there actually is a difference in these um, VIC-2 chips that I'm going to show you on, the, on a little um, pinout uh, schematic that I printed out for this chip. So here's the pinout of the um, VIC-2, the old version, 6569 is the one we have in this one, 6567 is the equivalent um, NTSC version for um, the American NTSC video mode market. And there are a lot of uh, data lines and address lines and uh, stuff like that and um, video output, color, luma, uh, yeah. And uh, what interests us is the voltages. So you have this one here, which is VDD. It says plus 12 volts. So maybe you have seen my um, Aldi Commodore 64 video. I will link that in again here, where I um, state that the new boards, like this one here, don't even uh, have the 12 volts anymore. The old Bradbins had um, voltage regulators on here for 5 volts and 12 volts because they were needed for the VIC, as we've seen on the, on the schematic here. Um, the new ones didn't have that. And that is because the um, new version of the VIC-2 didn't need 12 volts. It just, it was powered by 5 volts. The 5 volts were going into the same uh, pin, the 12 volts were going in here. Um, and we had 5 volts. This is 5 volts on the old one and on the new one. So the old one needs 5 volts here and 12 volts here. The new one needs 5 volts here and 5 volts here. So the old chip won't work in this new board because the voltage doesn't match. <laughs> it gets too little, too little uh, juice on pin 13. So probably that's probably why it outputs a black screen, because it won't start up properly. Let's try and put a new version of the VIC-2 in there. And as it so happens, I have a new VIC-2 here, among other things uh, I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, this is the 8565. Revision 2, which doesn't really matter, um, which is the HMOS version of the um, 6569, uh, and that is the one that only needs um, two 5 volt input voltages. So we're going to put this in there instead of the old uh, NMOS chip and see what we get. Okay, it's in there, nice and tight. 
So I think we can make uh, a test. All the, the other stuff looks as if it might work. So and of course, uh, you may have seen the previous video where I fixed this monitor, uh, which I will link in here. Uh, of course, I'm using this because it's just, it's so nice and it works a treat again. So connecting this all up. Turn the monitor on. And, okay, contact. Let's see what we get. Yes, <laughs> there it is. It seems to have fixed it. it. Seems to have been just the wrong version of the chip in there that um, wants more volts on pin 13. And as I said often before, the dead test cartridge I'm using takes some seconds to um, kick in. That's perfectly normal. So there we are. Dead test. And it's checking the memory and um, stuff like that. And uh, it also has a little SIT test tune in there. So we can be sure that this uh, Commodore 64 is fine. This one seems to be perfectly working. So um, this is a kind of a short video this time, but you never know with these things. It's always... Um, yeah, I'm doing these spontaneously and most of the times I don't know what uh, the issue is with the machines I get on my uh, little workbench here. So this one was pretty obvious to me and I, maybe you learned something from this. So don't try to, to replace the VIC-2 with the wrong version of the chip, which won't work. You will get a black screen. So here's uh, Comic Bakery, actually, um, which is a really good game I found to test the VIC-2 chip, actually, because it has um, glitches whenever the VIC-2 chip uh, has slight issues. Um, I used it to, to troubleshoot Bradbins a bit, and uh, usually it, it, um, there were glitches in this game that didn't appear on any other game or any anything else, basically. Um, namely with the sprites and the colors. It seems to use uh, quite some, some special routines there. Plus it's a pretty nice game. <laughs> but um, yeah, I really like it. It has a really, really nice um, presentation. The music's great, the graphics are nice and um, the game's fun, basically. So, um, and it's a good test for the VIC-2, which seems to work fine on this one. You, on the, the other VICs I tested with it that were broken, we had glitches around the player sprite and we had um, graphics glitches and flicker. So, um, a dying VIC is often shown by flickering graphics and stuff. So this one seems to be absolutely 100% working Commodore 64, so uh, that was a, a short, kind of a short episode. Anyway, thanks to, so much for watching. Thanks to my patrons for my support. If you want to join my patrons, you can click in the corner here. Um, every little amount you can spare helps a lot to buy things for the channel. Um, yeah, great plans for this year and I hope um, you stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. I'm Jan Beta. See you next time. Bye. Whoa. Raccoons. Raccoons everywhere. Raccoons. Yay, three cakes. <laughs>